I've been cooking with corned beef for as long as I can remember. It's one of those dependable ingredients that feels like it'll never change. But what does the great British public think about corned beef? I took to the streets to find out. Yorkshire, considered the home of great British grub and an ideal spot for a taste test. Corned beef has a very special place in the heart of Britain's. But most of the time, it's stuck at the back of the cupboard, out of date, and used in case of emergencies only. It's a cheap and cheerful product, and most people do actually question the meat inside it. But I'm not serving corned beef straight from the tin. I'm going to knock up an old favourite of mine, corned beef hash. It's a simple mix of corned beef, potatoes, onions and carrots, cooked in vegetable oil with a dash of Worcester sauce for extra flavour. It brings back memories, doesn't it? You had the tin of corned beef, you were posh. <laughs> in the forces, we used to have little tins of corned beef, half the size of that. Throw an egg on the top, cooks, lovely. And that was one of the best meals we ever had. Is that all right? It was very good. What do you think of it? <laughs> you like it? It's the same Yorkshire treat, good. Corned beef might be a blast from the past, but it's still got its fans here in Yorkshire. I know there's great corned beef out there which the quality of the meat is, is almost fillet steak-like and cooked properly. I think it'd be great to bring something back that's a very British dish. My quest for a freshly made corned beef takes me to a farm butcher who, so the locals tell me, sells it. Welcome to Town and Farm Shop. Now, you're a fifth-generation butcher. That's it, yeah. I'm here to actually check out corned beef. OK. Now, show me a corned beef. <laughs> We've not got any here, but we've got some beef, uh, and we can obviously corn it and turn it into a cured beef, into a corned beef. Why haven't you got corned beef here now? We don't make it all of the time, but we do make it from time to time. I might not be getting a taste, but to actually see a fresh batch being made is an even better result. This is the brisket, so we're going to use that one. And can I ask you a stupid question? You know, I'm talking to a butcher here, a fifth-generation butcher who's made corned beef before. What is corned beef? First of all, let's talk about the corned, then. There's no corn in it. The corned is to do with salt, so it's a salted beef. Or, in this case, it's actually going to be a wet cure, so it's going to be a brined beef. OK. And the corns, corns of salt. So, pinion, and if you can get me some Mallandale spring water, Chris still makes his corned beef with a traditional preservative, a mix of water, saltpetre and local beer. Do you want all this in there? Just half a bottle in half here. Bottle. Yeah. That's very good. Salt, pickle and spices go in. We don't need masses of this added flavour. Right. Let's give it a bit of a quick stir. Chris uses brisket, which makes his corned beef top quality. So just get rid of that string. So that literally now goes into our cure. Historically, corned beef was made of cheaper cuts as a long-life transportable meat. It was served on board Navy shipping as far back as the 18th century. This was purely used to preserve the meat so they could have it halfway through the journey. Yeah, I mean, going back to curing in barrels, it would be used on uh, sailing ships in the Navy. Uh, then through to more modern-day armies, uh, they would actually have bully beef. They'd have tinned rations. The beef is left to cure in a fridge for a minimum of seven days. This one's already had a week in the brine. There we go. There's a visual difference in the colour, actually, isn't there? Yeah, I think that'll, uh, that'll be good. OK, fantastic. So, really, I'm, all I'm going to do here is cut it into smaller pieces just so it fits in the mincer. So that's the secret to making corned beef. The meat is preserved, spiced, minced, and then cooked in a press. We've got a selection of different old presses, quite a few family heirlooms. So you're literally just popping that in, pressing it into the corners. OK, that's it. And that literally is it. Is that it? It's pressed, yeah. It's now going to go into the oven for three hours. I can't wait to try it. But thanks for everything today, Chris, and I can't wait. But I'll see you in a couple of days. OK. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Having seen the process of making a proper corned beef, fresh stuff with great meat, I'm just infuriated. I've got to wait two more days to try it. But there's worse places to come back to. Hey, everybody, Yeah, good, good, good. So you come back to try it then. 
Well, yeah, where is it? It's in the fridge. Have I don't get really? it. You, don't, you haven't seen it yet, have well, you? No, no. I definitely haven't seen it. I haven't touched it. OK, all it's right. It's just cooked Crack and chilled. On. This better be good. I've been away for two days, just come back to make sure that the corned beef's good. It's been in the oven for three hours. It's been cooling now for over a day. I'm sure it will be. When we saw it made, it was a great cut of meat. But the only thing I've got to go against is the tin stuff. So it would be fascinating to see my first artisan corned beef. Here we go. Hi, buddy. Same press, chilled, cooked. It is, yeah. Oh, it is cold, yeah. Moment of truth, really. Let's get yes. in there. It's going to be can... worth it, Chris. Well, hopefully, hopefully. No pressure. Just press these down gently on those springs. Oh, there we go. Looks very similar to it. Not quite as pink, is it? No. It's got the same consistency. It smells more aromatic than the, the tin stuff. Pickling spice. OK, mate, the proof of the pudding. It's past the first test. It's stuck in the tin. That's actually clear of the sides now. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Look at that. Actually, it looks a bit like corned beef, if I'm honest. It's, it's got a slightly different hue to it, hasn't it? It looks more like a pate. But Chris doesn't look very happy with it. It's not as pink. I would have hoped it, for it to be pink and maybe a bit longer curing, I think, would be the secret. Absolutely. Also, maybe longer chilled. Yeah, it could be. There's not much fat in there. If you remember the, the meat, the brisket that we used, it was very, very lean. Mm. Nearly too lean. I can't resist. I'm going to have to try some. Yeah, I'm going to have to, <laughs> yeah. Go on. Chris's corned beef usually has more of a glaze and is brighter in colour. The biggest issue is it needs that gel, doesn't it? It yep. needs that marrow in it. I'd be tempted to actually add gelatin leaves to that. Normally, when we make bigger batches, it, that's exactly what we do. i tell you what, would you come down to my kitchen and bring another one with you that you are 150% happy with? I'd love to do that, yeah, that would be great. Chris, our corned beef producer, has joined me in the kitchen. Welcome, Chris. Hiya. See, so you brought another corned beef with you. We did have a slight problem with the one up in Yorkshire, because we never left it long enough, did we? That's right. Now, we brushed the last one, so this has had all the time it needs, and hopefully it's cured perfectly. How long did you leave it for, then? Eight days. OK, can we open it up so we can have a quick look? We can try, can't we? Try. So, we get this out, mate. Yeah, yeah. Get in here. There we go. Yay. Look at that. Look at that. That's all right, though. Hey? That looks like corned beef. It does. You've got a nice shine on there as well. Let me just see what it looks like inside. I'll cut this piece off here. Now, that actually looks like corned beef. It does. That's better, Chris. <laughs> That's more like it. Good. Try it. It's got a great texture to it. It's mm. more, there's more to it. It doesn't break down like a normal corned beef. No. It feels like you're eating a good quality bit of meat, actually. Yeah, well, you are. Now, I'm going to make a corned beef pie. Corned beef I'm pie? Gonna, I'm going to put it in a plate pie, so I'm going to go back to traditional. Mm -hmm. okay, All right? Brilliant. Yeah. This is a corned beef plate pie bursting with flavour and meaty goodness. Now, all I'm going to do is make a very basic pie. So I'm using celery, I'm using carrots, I'm using parsley, I'm using potato, a little bit of sauce and corned beef. Over here, I've got a pan that's heating up nicely, a little bit of oil in there. And I'm going to chop up my celery. Is this the sort of food you go for, Chris? Yeah, very much. Casserole, pies, that kind of stuff, traditional. Especially up in Yorkshire. Up in Yorkshire. Up in yeah. Yorkshire. Absolutely. So the main difference, really, as far as you're concerned, between the shop-bought stuff, you know, the stuff you, you normally get in tins and yours. Well, for a start, it's what goes in, or what doesn't go in is probably more important. And none of the cheap cuts or the, the bits, not even any cut-offs or anything. It was literally just brisket. So it comes down to the quality, is what goes in. The quality of the ingredients going in, then you know exactly what's going to come out. What other food products would you say is better sort of prepared artisanally rather than the mass-produced stuff? Things like luncheon tongue, pickled tongue. I love um, tongue. You don't see that nowadays, do you? You don't, no. You know what? The last time I tried tongue was at my nan's house. 
And actually, my nan was the only one I knew that actually ate the stuff. And she got me into it. I mean, I must have been nine, ten. To the carrot, celery and onion, add potato, beef stock and Worcester sauce. Then I add the star of this recipe, Chris's corned beef. You want some big, chunky pieces of this, as you would do if you were doing a hash. Get your meat, chuck that in there as well. And this is going to be your base filling for this pie. So you need to cook this out for at least five, five minutes for the potatoes, if they're small enough. Add your corned beef, and basically you're just going to brown that slightly, literally just for a couple of minutes. It'll begin to break down. Then this whole thing needs to be chilled in a fridge, because obviously you can't build your pie until your filling is cold, because otherwise you can have serious issues. So let me just clean this down. Are you always this tidy, then? Me? Oh, yeah, all the time, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is a plated corned beef pie. The case is a simple, short crust pastry. Over here, I have my enamel plate. So I'm just going to put a layer underneath before I put the filling on. Roll out the pastry to the size of the plate. Take your pastry right to the edge and roll it out. Push it all down so it gets deep down, because you've got to put some filling in there as well. And then you need to get the filling from the fridge, which has chilled. Then add some freshly chopped parsley, mix and pour into the pastry. And ram it all in there as much as you can. I want it to be a bulbous pie. Still a few chunks of corned beef there, but it does tend to break down, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. No, I'm happy with that. Now, I've got to make a lid, which you manipulate the dough again, smooth it off. And you don't trim that bit off, then? I'd have trimmed that off already. You don't. Going to? No, but with the lid, I mean, you're going to... I'm going to put the lid on and trim it off. Do you want to do it, Chris? No, no, no. Are you sure, mate? I'm positive. <laughs> Once the lid's on, it's trimmed and ready for the finishing touch. Now, obviously, crimping. You can do anything you want with crimping. I tend to use the good old favourite, and you can make them quite small. By pinching your fingers together, it makes it more detailed around the outside. And you literally just go around, crimping, pushing the bottom, and the top together, so it looks like that. Now, a little cross on the top. One, two. We used to call that letting the devil out. Glaze with a beaten egg to finish. And there you have it. A beautiful corned beef plate pie. Now, that's going to go in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes at 200 degrees C, and it'll be beautiful golden brown and filled with that gorgeous artisanal corned beef. My corned beef plate pie is perfect for the whole family. The kids will love it. Chris, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer to try this baby, as I had to wait for a decent corned beef. Yeah, I look forward to it.